that the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, Honorable Betty Amongi Ongom, resigns in public interest with immediate effect. The top management at NSSF says that the probe committee of parliament that investigated mismanagement of the 18 trillion fund did not use all the availed information. The NSSF acting managing director, Patrick Ayota, says that failure by the committee to use the availed information has led to erroneous conclusions. The committee did not consider all the facts. For example, the issue of onboarding geomapping technology. Geomapping te technology for us today is where you have to think through that Uganda doesn't have addresses. So we have to, for each employer who is there, we have to get their coordinates, we put them in our system. So when there is a new manager who goes to an area, we just give him the area coordinates and you'll know where every employer is. IOTA says that the committee did not consider all the provisions available in the NSSF Act regarding waivers and penalties on non-remittance of contributions by employers, saying that if the managing director did not waive off all the interests, it would cripple the businesses contrary to the plight of the fund. At the end of the day, the employer owes 10 million shillings. The interest on that 10 million shillings could be 7 million shillings, but the penalty on that amount because of the length could be over 100 million shillings. And you get a small business, if you demanded the 100 million shillings after they paid the principal and the interest, you will cripple that business. And guess what? The business will close, which means now you've created another social security program because people who are working now don't have a job. While the fund has kept in the press for the bad reasons, the fund has grown to 18.2 trillion shillings as of the end of February 2023, generating 7 shillings to each shilling contributed by the members, in addition to keeping the fund's administrative costs at 1.7%, relative to the global benchmark of 2.2%. This has made the NSSF one of the best managed funds in Africa. On four aspects, we do recognize positive milestones that management has taken. The ministers also do. The second point is we do recognize also what management ought to have done and they have not done. Number three, we also acknowledge what management has done so well, but they can do better. The NSSF board chairperson, Dr. Peter Chimbawa, says that the report on the flip side was devoid of analysis and context on the investment as one of the assets in the total asset portfolio has lost value. To him, the poor performance of one asset is offset by the good performance of another. He had to go back almost two decades to find just one investment that has lost value is not bad performance by any measure, by any indicator, or by any standard in investment. Particularly, since the investments cannot be judged with the benefit of insight. Much as the Mwine Mpaka Committee recommended that the top management steps aside, the officials at the fund insist that they will not do so until the executive orders so. In pursuit of achieving the 50 trillion shillings mark by 2035, the NSSF will engage in combing the parish development model as well as expansion of coverage. Officials at the fund say that the meeting at Kapeka was meant to increase the responsiveness of the fund to its members and as such, the platform was to discuss adequate compensation of labor as well as weaving the fund into the national development fabric. It remains to be seen if the recommendations will be implemented. Hakim Wampamba, NBS, live at nine.